The next topic we're going to talk about is a summation object. The question here we have is what is a summation object and what does it hold and what does it hold when it's set in an experiment? And the next question is how do you set the total accuracy of the entire experiment using a summation object? So total accuracy is definitely something that a lot of researchers would want to know, the reaction time or the accuracy, those are statistics that are generally um, gather during an experiment. Um, you can check your data file by what's set in the actual objects and what's in the interface, the data that's logged through the regular interface of E-Prime. But as I mentioned with script, there's a lot of customization you can do. And this summation object allows you to set basically this object that will hold different uh, values for you. So a summation object is, um, as I mentioned, a very specific object set only in script. You can't use a summation object in the interface. And it holds different observations, so whatever you want it to hold. And it will report a value in the end. So that's, I kind of look at it as like a bin, and it kind of holds and gathers um, statistical data for you throughout your experiment. And then at the end, it'll give you a nice number of whatever you need um, for this example, we're doing total accuracy. So the summation will gather that for you in the background um, of E-Prime, in the background using the script, and then it will generate a value for you at the end. And as common practice, I like to open up eBasic Help to talk about the, um, the summation object. So I'm just typing it in here, and you'll see it pops up right away. And there's quite a bit of information on here about summation object, different methods that you can do. I'm going to go to the general topic. And you can see that there are a lot of different observations that you can add by just using the summation. So this is definitely something you would want to take a look at. Um, a lot of these samples do have debug statements as well. This is actually checking the, um, the mean of, of, a, of a value to um, have that print out in the output window. So with our experiment today, you were given a setup of um, a prime experiment. The hypothesis is basically um, written here in the instructions that you'll be shown a green or red item followed by a text. And the hypothesis is that green items are more likely to be followed by words. Red items are more likely to be followed by non-words. If the text is a word, press 1. If the text is not a word, press 2. So this is what the sample <clears throat> experiment has set up for you. There is no script added in here yet. So we wanted to actually set up the interface for you so that you can just build with the script and not have to actually put in each and every object. So as I mentioned, the summation object is something that you can set in your experiment, and there's a couple different things that you have to add, a couple different inline scripts that you have to add through your experiment so that each time something is gathered in terms of the participant's response, the summation object will um, evaluate those uh, reaction times or those statistics and kind of keep, a, keep track of them for you. So the first thing we're going to look at is the user script. That's common practice to go to view and user script. And you want to put anything in here, as I mentioned, that would be um, useful to have reference later on in the entire experiment. Now, with, this, with the summation object, we have to first declare that we're using a summation object. And if you're not familiar with the declaring of, a, of an object or a um, script, you want to use the dim statement. So I'm going to use dim to declare something. And we're going to actually declare the total accuracy. As um, I mentioned, that's something that is pretty common to be kind of um, calculated at the end of an experiment. And we need to first set that as a summation. And you'll see with E-Prime uh, script sense, the feature allows the blue, uh, kind of the color of the script to change to blue. This, allow this lets you know that E-Prime has accepted or recognizes the script that you're writing. So the um, dim statement has been recognized, that's why I turned blue. And then I had the total accuracy as, and E-Prime recognized that I want to set or declare this, and there's a huge list that it pulls up for me. This is kind of um, a way that E-Prime um, allows 
this feature basically helps uh, you see what's available to set if you're not familiar with scripting. So it'll give you this huge list, which is pretty helpful. And if you don't see this, um, this drop down, you may have a different version of ePrime. I'm using the new, the newest version of ePrime, which is available on our website um, under downloads. It's uh, ePrime 2.0.10.356. And um, using the professional version, which you may be using standard, which is fine. Um, but I'm going to now declare this total accuracy as a summation. So if you scroll down to the S's, you'll see somewhere down here, here is summation. So I could type it or I could use the drop down. Now the other thing I want to collect, um, you know, you might as well put a, a few different statistics in here and use the summation object because it's very handy if you want to collect some something. So I'm going to do the actual uh, red image reaction time. And what that means is I want to know how long it takes the participant to react to a red image versus a green image and then also a uh, green versus red text because you'll remember that that's um, kind of what, they're, what the instructions say here. So the red image reaction time as a summation and then we're going to declare the green image reaction time as summation as well. And then the next thing is the red text reaction time as a summation. And then the last would be the green text. So it sometimes seems a little bit redundant how much you know you have to type out with ePrime, but you have to let um, ePrime know each specific thing that you're first declaring and then what you're going to do with each thing and once it's set in there it's ready to go so these objects are available as summation so just look at those as empty bins that are now available to collect any um, you know data that you would need so I'm going to close the user script and of course really great common practice is to save so make sure you save your experiment now that we've done the user script, we're going to actually go into the um, experiment and set. So we've declared the summation, now we have to set it, which means that we have to let ePrime know at the beginning every time this experiment runs to set it as a new summation. So I'm going to open up my session procedure and right before the experiment even begins, meaning right before the instruction slide is shown to the participants, I'm going to drop an inline script here. And I'm going to call this inline script set summation. We are very here at PST, we are very keen on setting specific names for each object in each inline script so that you remember what is this script doing in my experiment. Uh, also, again, if you send it over to someone or send it to us or whoever, <laughs> um, that, that person will be able to understand exactly what's going on in this script. Now when I open it up, I'm going to set the summation. So we've declared the total accuracy as a, as a summation, but now we need to set it as something. We're going to set it, so setting the total accuracy equal to something. So we want to actually just refresh the summation as a new summation. And we're going to do the same for all the other things that we had declared. So we declared the red image reaction time, and we want to make sure that that is uh, refreshed as a new summation. And same with the green image reaction time. Again, it's kind of redundant, but it's easy to follow later on whenever you are going back to see what exactly you're gathering in your experiment. New summation. And the last one is the green text reaction time that we set as a summation. We're going to set it as new summation. So if you see where we've actually put this, as I mentioned, when the experiment starts, it'll automatically set that bin to new. So meaning it's been declared, it's available, but it's emptied out and ready to be a new summation at the beginning of the experiment. Okay, so now we've set that summation. And the next thing we're going to do is um, go back to our slide to talk a little bit about if we've answered this summation question. And we have. 
Um, the summation object is, as I mentioned, a specific object set only in script to hold different observations and will report a value in the end. And how do you set the total accuracy of the entire experiment using summation objects? So we've started that process. We've declared it in the user script, and then we've set it so it's ready to go in the actual run of the experiment. And then the last part here is where we format it, and that means we take whatever's whatever value we want reported, and we make it our own. We make it what we want to see. If we want to see percentage, if we want to see you know, in, in decimals or whatever specific value you want, you can format that summation object. So you can um, make it specific to what you need to see. And that's something that we're going to add in our script just in a little bit in our experiment that we're working on. Now the next topic is the operator precedence. Um, and the question here is, what is the order of the operator precedence in eBASIC, and what are select case statements? So these are the two topics we're going to cover in the next portion. So if I go back into my handy-dandy eBASIC help, which is what I always want to reference with script, I'm going to type in operator precedence, and you'll see the topic comes up. Now when I click on this, this list of um, operator description precedence order kind of reminds me of you know, what you've learned in your lower level math courses or beginning math where they teach you how uh, what things are going to be referenced in a math equation first so what will be calculated first in this this shows you how e prime uh, will actually reference the script or generate it or analyze it and what order so if you have parentheses as well as an and and an or or whatever you have in terms of the operators this is the order that they will be registered so that's important to keep in mind just like with the math equation the reason we bring this up is because we're going to now add some script where we could actually use and or we could use or and in this specific case and is actually better because it's um, higher in the precedence and it will make the comparison a little bit easier in our script so to do that we're going to now open up and add some script here so We've set our summation, and it's ready to go. It's ready to add you know, data as it goes through. Now, as in any experiment, you want to actually do the registering or evaluating after the stimulus. So after the participant has responded, we're going to add a, um, another inline script. So I'm going to open up this trial procedure. And you'll see that this is leveled as a practice procedure, and then there's also the test procedure. But once I add my inline script after the stimulus here, it drops it in this in the um, test procedure as well. So this deals with you know not having to copy and paste. It's just um, the procedures have been copied actually, and um, they're exactly they're identical to each other except one is a practice uh, level and one is the test so a lot of researchers will want the practice to go first and whenever the participant is ready and has practiced um, running through it they'll actually collect data and use the test procedure so here I don't have to worry about typing it twice I'm going to change this inline to say evaluate stimulus which is very easy to understand what's going to happen in this specific inline script right after the participant response to the stimulus that's shown the script in the background is going to evaluate it now we're going to type quite a bit of script here so let's open up our our kind of workspace and we're going to basically check using an if then statement about what what happened with the stimulus so if the stimulus dot accuracy and you'll notice when I reference the stimulus slide and then hit dot it automatically pulls up all the different things that I can reference you know the onset time of the stimulus the um, the reaction time the response the start time of the stimulus there's so many different properties that you can reference so many different statistics of this one object so like I said, there's a lot you can do in the interface in terms of properties, but there's even more you can do with script. So I'm going to 
actually just look at the accuracy of the stimulus slide. So if the stimulus dot accuracy equals one, meaning if the participant pressed one, then, and you'll notice that E prime is recognizing this if then statement by it turning blue. If it is one, we're going to use the command set a trib and you'll see same thing. Once I hit C dot set a trib, uh, it's going to pull it up for me. And we're going to set the answer state. Now answer state is not, ava is not available in this list, but I'm actually setting it using set a trib so it will be available as an attribute. Um, as I mentioned, you can set attributes uh, in the startup info editor or in the actual lists here, or another way is by using the set a trip command. Um, and this is, you know, in, in a lot of uh, EPRIME experiments, but you can also look into the topic of set a trip and get a trip in your, uh, in the eBasic help. So using set a trip allows me to set the attribute answer state. And for them pressing one, I want to set that answer state to be correct. Now, the other thing I want to put is else, meaning if something else is, uh, is responded, if something else is pressed other than one, we will do c dot set a trib that the answer state and now you'll see that answer state is available in the drop down because as I said I've set it up here so anything you set with the set a trib is available um, in the experiment and then I will set that to incorrect if it's if something else is registered and then of course you need to um, close that with an end if and we also recommend making sure that you use indentation when you're writing a few lines of script together. You want to make sure that you know that the script, you know, the script is generated together. And if you just go through without any proper lining or indentation, it's very confusing when you go back and try to look at what's wrong. So it's helpful to know this chunk of script is together. And we closed it with an end if. Now that we've done that, we're going to do some more if-then statements. And now we're going to look at the operator precedence of using AND over OR. So if I do if C dot get a trib, and um, the other thing I want to mention with the uh, E prime scripting is you'll notice when I put my mouse over some things that we've set, it gives me a little nice uh, kind of like a summary. Like for the set a trip, it's saying that this sets the value of the attribute at the current level of the context. If you go up here to stimulus a slide, this says the slide object is derived from the uh, runnable input object and provides the mechanism to display multiple types of stimuli. So it kind of gives you a description of what's being um, referenced there. Anyways, um, if C dot get a trib, and now we're going to set the, or we're going to get an attribute. So when you get an attribute, you use these parentheses. And if you're setting an attribute, you use uh, these quotation marks. So once I actually put a parenthesis right next to the get a trip, you'll see E-Prime pulls up the possible attributes that I can get. Uh, of course, I have um, to pull from here, and I want to pull the congruency. So if we get the attribute congruency and we make it equal to congruent, that just allows us to know that it is uh, congruent and the C dot get a trib stimulus type. Now I'm using stim type and then we're going to do equals word, then indentation C dot get a trib, then we're actually going to set, I apologize, uh, we're going to set the attribute trial type, and you'll see that's not available either. I'm actually setting that as an attribute, that's why I needed to use set a trib, to easy. So what this is doing here is it's letting you know that if 
the attribute is congruent and it's a word, then this trial type, we want to label that as easy. So this is showing you that what you can do with script um, if you want to analyze not only what response was given, but whether it was congruent or whether it was considered an easy trial type or not. These are things that can be kind of uh, registered in the background of ePrime once the participant responds. The next line that we want to make sure we add is an else if statement. So we're going to go down to the next line and type in. And actually putting spaces is helpful as well. It's up to you if you want to kind of not have spaces, but I know it's easier to follow if you do have a few more spaces between. So this else if statement is saying that get a trib congruency, so the same thing. Oops. So if it's, you know, if this is not registered as an easy trial type, the other option using this else if is congruency equals equals incongruent and c dot get a trib, same thing, stimulus type, which is now in there, stim type, because we've set that equals word then c dot set a trib trial type oops equals will be set to moderate. So what this is saying is if it's congruent and it has the word stim type, then that's considered easy. However, if it is congruent, if the congruency is shown as incongruent and the stim type is a word, that is considered a trial type moderate. So we're setting all these if-then statements to check the stimulus, um, the you know what was, what accuracy was given if it was congruent, and then setting that with uh, what trial type we think it is, whether it's easy or moderate. Now, the reason we point this out is you could put OR in here, as we talked about operator precedence. There's a lot you can do with script. You could do, you know, you see the equal sign and you see the parentheses. These are all things that are going to be referenced as we talked about in the order of the operator precedence. But with AND, you can also change that to OR, or you can change it to, you know, equal, or you could do it to, um, pretty much any precedence that you want, but with this case, with these if-then statements, and is is basically the best way or the most logical way to evaluate whether it's congruent and uh, what stem type is used, and then letting ePrime know that you want that trial type to be considered the easy type or the moderate type. So using and helps ePrime look at two chunks of um, information and kind of gathering it together and labeling it something by using the set a trip command. Or is, is a presence that's more used if you're comparing two different things, where here we actually want to gather information about two bits of, uh, you know, two attributes being the stim type and whether it's congruent or incongruent, and then labeling um, the trial type as easy or moderate. So we're going to continue with that uh, train of thought. And the next line we're going to do is we have a moderate, and we have mostly looked at word, stem type that's a word, so now we're going to look at non-words. So the next one would be else if c dot get a trib, and then it's going to pull up congruency, and c dot get a trib stem type. So as I mentioned, it's pretty redundant, but um, this is how you would set the analysis that you want. Now we're going to actually reference a non-word as the stim type. And then we'll set this to trial type moderate. So this is looking at whether it's congruent with a non-word then that's considered moderate. The last one we want to set is another else if statement. C dot get a trib 
congruency equals incongruent and c dot get a trip the stimulus type equals non-word again then we'll do c dot set a trip for the um, trial type as difficult. And then of course you need to have an end if statement to close out that um, that bit of script. So hopefully I went kind of slow enough for you guys to follow along but of course if you need some more time to register what each line is doing and why it's set that way you can pause and go back in the presentation. Um, the reason I wanted to talk slowly kind of regarding this operator precedence is because as I mentioned you could if you want to play around on your end is change this uh, to or so instead of you know um, it's saying if congruent and stem type you could do if congruent or that stem type is a word um, then it's kind of checking one or the other and labeling it as easy or moderate so that kind of shows you the importance of making sure you have the right operator precedence in um, in the in the order that you've typed it so that it e prime checks it accordingly to what you're trying to um, set Okay, so now that we've set these um, so that E-Prime in the background will check whether the stimulus, you know, what was responded and whether it was labeled as an easy, moderate, or difficult trial type, and that will be in our data file, I'm going to save that so that we don't lose that information. And I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint to make sure that we've answered the operator precedence questions. And as I talked about, this is something in eBasic that we looked at the list of whether and is referenced before or and the list of the um, operator precedents.